round part, square stock, let's make it on a mill. Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Enough talking, let's get to machining. This is the first operation for our part. We're going to start off with just a gratuitous removal of stock. The stock is way oversized, so we're just going to bump the top of it off. We're using a 2 inch facing mill. We're running at 100 inches a minute with an 8 inch depth of cut and a 1.5 inch width of cut. This equates to approximately 4 horsepower, so we're putting a fair amount of power into the part right now. You can really see the chips flying off the material. So once we have our stock to the correct height, now we're going to actually use the 2 inch facing mill and contour out that bolt head and do the roughing passes on the bolt head. Because the 2 inch facing mill is so rigid, it really allow, allows us to remove that stock quite quickly. Now that the bolt head is roughed out, we're going to step down a little further and then just rough out the OD of the lower flange of the part. You can see by using such a large tool, you really can get your part rough uh, to size fairly quickly. So now we're going to put away the two inch facer and we're going to switch over to a three quarter finisher mill. And then we're just going to profile around all of our dimensions and bring them to a final dimension. So now we're going to go around the bolt head and we added little tiny radiuses to all the corners of the bolt. So we'll get a nice finished part that's all deburred right out of the machine. Once we do the bolt head, we're going to step down a little further and then bring that OD of the flange to a final dimension as well. Now we switch to a chamfer mill and we're going to put that nice chamfer on the head of the bolt to get a nice looking bolt head. We flipped our part over securely in the vise and we're ready to start OP2. No. What are you doing? You cammed it. Yeah. So? Operators. <sighs> Bosses. Now that we have our part properly secured in our vise, we're going to restart operation two. Now we, we didn't have any damage to the face mill or the machine, and we were actually able to salvage the part. We're cutting air right now, but on the last pass, uh, we were able to just take enough material off to finish up the top of the part. Now we're going to drill the center hole through the part, so we just spotted the location of that hole that drills through the center of the shaft of the bolt. Now we're going to use a peck drilling cycle to drill that deep hole, it's about an inch deep, uh, into the shaft of the bolt. Now that we have the drilling cycle complete, we're going to switch back to our 2 inch face mill. And recall we're using this 2 inch face mill because we're going to do a spiral uh, helical milling down the shaft of the part um, rather than doing an end milling operation. Uh, this will yield a little bit better result, I believe. Now, the part was complaining the whole time that it wasn't liking this setup, uh, but it was enough to, to get the part machine. So you can see the nub of the bolt just starting to appear now uh, out of the rough stock. Now we're going to continue to mill down until we expose enough of the bolt shaft to then be able to finish the diameter of that so that we can prepare it for threading operation. So now we're going to switch to a 3 quarter inch end mill and we're going to bring the OD of the uh, 
bolt shaft to its final dimensions, uh, and then that will allow us to thread mill in the next operations. We're going to use our chamfer mill before our thread mill, and this will allow us to uh, put a chamfer on the ID of the bolt and then we'll also do a nice chamfer on the OD of the bolt so that our thread has a really nice lead in uh, so it engages real nice when we go to screw it together. Now we've switched over to our thread mill and we're doing a helical and turbulated uh, thread milling operation on the OD of the bolt. This is a 10 millimeter metric thread by one millimeter pitch. So after the end of the bolt has completed its machining operations, we're switching back to the 2-inch face mill and we're going to continue our downward helical spiral uh, to get rid of the rest of the, the material around the bolt shaft. As we get lower and lower in the part, the, the setup becomes uh, a lot happier because the rigidity starts increasing. Uh, the cutter doesn't have the leverage uh, on the part towards the bottom as it does on the top. You can see we're almost uh, done getting rid of the rest of the stock around the, the bolt shaft. Then we're going to step out and go around one of the intermediate diameters on the bottom uh, of the retainer. So you can see the rest of the stock just disappeared there. So now all the roughing is complete, all the stock is removed that we need to rough off. We're going to switch back to our 3 quarter inch end mill and then finish up the diameters on the lower, lower section of this part. Uh, this is where the actual bronze sintered element will rest uh, when it's all assembled together. There's also a uh, tapered flange on the, on the bottom of this part and we're going to do a 3D uh, spiral milling operation to generate that uh, it's a conable shape on the back of this flange. Now even with this old machine we were able to successfully uh, do 3D tool paths that are pretty complex up to about 50 inches per minute. Uh, so even though these machines are a bit on the older side they're still very capable of generating a lot of parts. Uh, not quite as fast as today's modern machines but they're st they still get the job done. and that will complete uh, the operations for OP2. Originally I was going to do this last operation on the drill press, but I decided to put it in the machine anyway. So this is going to put the cross holes in the part. We're going to spot drill them first pretty deep to keep the drill bit from walking off the side of the part. The way that we're holding the part is we've got one end in the vise, and that's giving us our XY reference, and then we have the opposite end just resting on a block. Uh, to give us a Z reference and to prevent the end of the part from deflecting down. Then we're just going to run a peck drilling cycle uh, to put these two cross holes in. and This will complete all the machining operations uh, for this part. Well, that part got a little exciting uh, towards the middle there. Now, the funny part about this thing is that I made two of these. And when I made the first one, it ran beautifully. It ran perfect. What I think happened there is I'm using the side of the vise, which isn't the best practice to do. And I put a, uh, a block on the opposite side of the vise to keep the vise jaws from canting. And what happened, I think, is that the block was a little bit larger than the size of the part. So the vise jaws canted a little bit on me and I didn't have good flush contact on the, the bolt head, which then made it pop out of the vise. Um, it wasn't catastrophic, we didn't damage any tooling, we were actually able to salvage the part, uh, luckily. It, if it was any material but aluminum, it probably would have been a different story, probably would have tore up that cutter, you know, would have made a much louder bang in most likeliness. So, you know, I knew this part was going to be sketchy going into it. If a customer asked me to make this part, I, I would uh, respectfully decline. It's just not something that this machine's 
you know, good at making. Uh, but these are for myself, and I just needed two of them, so I decided to make them. We might have been able to do things a little bit differently in hindsight, and maybe get a little bit better part more reliably, but uh, overall it worked out good. I've got uh, two of these parts, and they're, uh, they're pretty good, so I'm happy with the way they came out. Uh, this is the head of the moisture separator uh, off the compressor, and the threaded part kind of goes into here, like so. So they, they thread in real nice. Uh, this is a metric thread, uh, and going back to the thread milling, this is the same thread mill that I use to thread mill uh, standard threads, and it works just fine. It's just a 60 degree thread mill. Um, there's a little bit of slop in there, but I think it's this part, not the, not the part that we made. I measured it out, and it measured out okay. So overall, uh, a success, and I'm, I'm happy with the way the part came out. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll throw some nice pictures at the end of the video so you can see more detail on uh, how the part came out. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.